end of dawn for game and a number two between Evos as well as Geek Fam. Remember, this is a best of three, meaning if Evos Legends win another game, Geek Fam will have to pay their respects. He definitely has to try and be a bit more aggressive here. And speaking of the matchups, having that Lolita also gives a decent amount of wave clear. Of course, definitely more compared to the Nat N N Natalia. And afterwards, it also provides a great crowd control if Geek Slate goes for the back line as well. Especially because they're engaged, it's very telegraphed with the Black Dragon form. So I think Evo's Legends have a lot of solutions available here. Hmm, other than that, right? I was thinking about how Beloisky needs to play in this early game. He needs to find pickoffs on the board. Obviously, we've seen how much of a problem Brands is constantly, but being on the Moskov, he does have some sort of anti-CC. So even if they want to go for pickoffs, like what Beloisky is trying to do right now, it's not going to be as simple. Well, they're going to go for more here, it seems, with Dreams rotating. Beloy has been knocked back. The stop does connect, but look at that damage. Oh my goodness, Beloy is so, so low. That was Brands popping the Inspire. And that's a battle spell technically used. Now, is it worth it? Because Malloy did not die. He has to recall. Brands gets more pressure on the board. But is it worth it? In the early game, I think it's just, it's okay. Considering the pressure that Geek Slate is supposed to have, right now in the early game, before the ultimates are available, Evo's Legends have a bit of a window where the wave clear and the pressure actually can match up to Geek Slate. But now with the first turtle spawning, this is where things get a bit hairy for both these teams. Vision is important, and they need to know where is Natalia and where is Lolita, right? Both these players, if they are missing from the map, that is a huge amount of pressure in the back of the minds of the players involved in this turtle take. Black Dragon formed by Luke. That's Dreams with the Numino Blast! Perfectly placed onto three! Taz comes in with a cloak ultra as well! It's the first blood over here for Psychos as he's gonna be taken down. Taz in the midst now as Janna is able to munch on him there. Spits him out, stuns him back. Taz taken down. Geek Slate looking for more damage as Hijume is forced to flicker out. Geek Slate win the team fight, but Evo Legends secure the neutral objective. And in the early game, Arashi, which is more oh. worth it? Oh, what happened, Arashi? Why'd you swap sides? You left Ranger of Moss all alone, man. Heck? I was actually thinking of, uh, an underdog story in the previous game. I, I really hoped it was going to happen. But honestly, in this game, I think the drafts, uh, it's a bit going to be a bit too difficult for Geek State to deal with. So that's why I went and switched, you know, got to keep it competitive, keep it co interesting. <laughs> Just switching it up. All right, okay, three minutes in the game right now. It does seem like Geek Slate has a little bit of an economy advantage. It's not too heavy just yet. It's not as evident just yet. And it turns out, 5v5, Geek Slate were able to get the better trade in that team fight. Well, they Why have is lot, that? They have a lot more long damage potential here. They have the Barats, and they have a lot of sustain as well. And the Numenum Blast gets cancelled out, though. So Geek might go aggressive here. Two cold altars already. Dreams losing a whole lot of HP as Psychons rotates over. Luke doing the same thing. That's the wall. Preventing Luke from doing anything more. And man, the gold not swinging here because Geek Slate, just like Ube's gold, they're investing and they are getting the value. 885 gold. Shadera has been free farming this game unlike the last. So already a big improvement coming in from Geek Slate, and they're going for these big team fights. And we talked about how a boy needs to be proactive, and how that means Hijume will be able to get uh -oh. a lot of cult alters. But now Beloisky gets jumped on, and he is the only hero right here that isn't really a team fight presence. So early on, the fact that Geek Slate was able to fight in the pit, use the uh, Daytona's welcome to sustain and uh, do a lot of damage at the base damage. I think Evo's Legends need to be careful in how they position here because if they spread out the way they did in game number one, I think they have a better chance of winning. Well, with the turtle now spawning back in, it's Geek Slate who has more pressure to play with. Evo's Legends can go for it. Luke's actually used the Petrify there. Pops in the Black Dragon form. Janna secures the second turtle of this game, pushing their lead to a 1,000 gold lead now as Evo's Legends are able to find a little bit up top. But Chadera actually steals the gold buff away with this carry, and that's going to be Beloy who launches onto Brands. That's a boy with a cult altar. Brands still able to flicker out. Not flicker, it's the dash with these fire two dreams with the flicker back. Brands still surviving. Oh. How do you take this man down? A boy with a stampede brings dreams back with the cult altar from Ijume. Out plays Beloy. That's the full work as oh. well. But Chadera fights it. Ijume is going to fall. Geek Slate have done it. It's a double for Chadera. The 3v3 won by the Geeks.
to a thousand gold lead now as Taz trying to clear the way, prevent any more casualties from happening, which is basically the tower. And that was a really good setup for Geek Slate. Initially, I thought it would have been bad for Geek Slate, but they're actually able to turn it around. And now with the 2,000 gold lead here in the fifth minute, what are the items looking like, Arashi? Well, the gold lane is not too far different. There's a bit more components built up by Chidera going in for the Demon Hunter Sword, most likely, in the second item. So it's still pretty even, but everywhere else, though, it, they're already starting to build towards their power spikes. Having the Catatalisman on a boy means more spammable spells, a lower cooldown of the Cult Altar, and I think that the early game is very chaotic here, and both teams are going for fights without, uh, uh, without planning it out, setting it up properly, so... In a way, it does benefit Geek Slate when it fights Go like that because they do have more dynamic playmaking tools. But for Evos, they still have a chance of coming out back here. It's a good stun. Doing on Blast as well. Beloisky going to be stunned up, but that's a very well timed called Alter by a boy. Tadera picks up the turret up top, and Geek Slate are just playing it really objectively. Slow tempo. Very unlike Geek. But notice how EVO's Legends, they're not fighting back either. I mentioned about the power spikes from hitting, and it seems like EVO's Legends, they're nowhere near that just yet. And you can see that they're not over committing onto these. But we'll see. It seems like EVO's Legends, they are going to try and look for a trade on the turtle or even look for a pick off. It's a good trade there, a good reset. As Luke is going to be caught here. That's a knockback by Brands, actually saving Luke. Black Dragon form now popped in as Luke is going to be able to jump into the backline once again with a bunch of fly. Lock and four members in play for the Cult Ultra. Saves him right here. It's going to be the turtle over to Jana QT. His dream is going to be taken low. Flickering out. Luke down for the Lord. XP for turtle. My bad, not Lord. As Geek Slater still waiting, using this gold lead. Hijume was forced to flick around and that's turret number one in the mid lane down. That was a very aggressive play from Geek Slate, even though Luke is already down to such a low amount of HP. He just goes in aggressively as Beloy tries and follows suit with that aggression, with the execute as well being used. I think Geek overall still comes out on top there, but it shows again that Evo's Legends need to pick their fights properly, because otherwise it's going to be way too difficult. And I do think that Dreams landing a big Numenon Blast seems to be one of the key tools, the key win conditions for Evo's Legends, because when that does not happen, you can see that Geek Slate get a lot more confident in how they want to move forward aggressively uh, without anything to punish them. I'm not sure what the plan is for Evo's Legends right now. Are they just trying to funnel as much gold onto Brands as they can and onto Hijumi as well to be able to dish out the damage because even if they want to go for a contest on the objective, Grana QT, he's one to two levels above Taz right now and it doesn't seem like they should be able to get anything out of it. I mean, if we take a look at the gold differences, right, you can really see how the Faramis just has more uh, ways to deal with the Valentina right now in the patch. And earlier when we saw the emblems, I do want to highlight side cost with the Weapon Mastery, right? We actually went for the Weapon Mastery instead of the High and Dry up top. There's a Black Dragon form responded to by a Black Dragon form as well. Chadera picks up a turret down below. But with the Weapon Mastery, what it does give Evo's Legends is more room to scale into that later stage of the game, right? Psycons is going to be constantly dealing more damage with more items. Uh, unlike the High and Dry, it really focuses on early game pressure and snowballing. But the issue is that later on in those team fights, Cyclops is going to be so reliant on that wild charge being available. And of course, in the right situations, if it's used in the right moment, it's a huge damage tool, a huge cut control tool as well. But it, it requires Geek Slate to be all clumped up. And considering they do have a Faramis, that is possible. But for the most part, I think Chidera is going to be way too uh, aware of that possibility. Now though, with Beloisi on the top side, people have a chance, but they don't have that kind of dynamic engage they had in game number one. Again, the turtle has been taken low. Spear of Destruction up top to try to clear out the waves from downtown. But remember, the split push threat is still a thing. Taz now going to be able to knock Janna up as Duke jumps in with the Black Dragon going to the back line with the Petrify as well. Brand is going to be able to pop that Inspire, dealing out the damage. The Minot Blast now charged in with a Flicker as well. Onto a point, but it's perfectly purified out. Meanwhile, on the top side, it's going to be a split push threat. Once again, Evo's Legends are able to take the Lord. Wow, what a steal. They are able to survive for now, bringing them more time to scale up to the monsters they're going to be in the later stage. Hijume reads it out well. Chadera is in that push, but he deals too much damage, and he will still be able to disengage. Turret tier one down in that bottom side, though. That was a 4v5 situation, and Evo's Legends were still able to get that Lord. And it's interesting, right? Because Beloisky went full on that top side, but 
eventually didn't get anything out of it. Do you think that was a mistake? Uh, he was just pressuring, and I think he was trying to make it was like just split up a bit more because he, he needs members to be alone, right, to get full advantage of that high end try over there. So Geek Slate, I do think it makes a bit of sense. They have the stronger picks as well, so they're trying to use the early game power to do something. But they go for a fight from five different directions right here. Called all tournament on blast. Brand's gonna be brought back into the team. Where is he? He's in the midst of it all. He actually dashes forward. Beloy finds the kill. Hijume flickering out from the pacifist. Kaz jumps over the Razor's wrath, finds a kill back, still able to sustain for a bit. But Janna takes his life. Dreams running away. Beloy dealing some damage back. And that was one of the rare, rare moments where Brands made a mistake that costed his team. This team fight now is on the hands of Geek Slate as they're looking to capitalize more onto the tier two. Psychons and Hijume are desperately trying to actually push them back from this turret, and they will be able to do so. But Geek Slate, they've lost a lot of their gold lead. That team fight was a little bit difficult though for Brand. Sure, he made a mistake by flickering in or dashing forward, but the problem was they were being attacked by all sides. Evil Geek Slate were able to get into that back line, was able to get Brand. As we're gonna take a look at the instant replay here, Rashi. You can see that initially Geek just go a lot. And look at Tadera. He just comes in from the back, from the side that were, and has his eyes straight onto Brand. And I think Brands was trying to try and counter that aggression with aggression of his own. But unfortunately, considering the composition, considering how Evos needs to set up for a proper team fight, Geek Slate finally get that messy team fight where their composition with more AoE, more crowd control at this moment, with the with Luke on the Yuzong, can do a lot more damage. So Evos needs to be a bit more careful and open up the map because aside from having members from Geek Slate just flanking around, they still need to be concerned about Boloyski. He is still a very legit, legitimate uh, threat for the backline, especially for brands on that marksman. Yeah, he's been so annoying so far, being able to pressure, being able to get pickoffs, being able to open up vision as well. Boloyski has been a huge factor. And other than that, I don't know, Psychots and Grok, I don't really feel like it's a really good mix. I haven't seen the wild charge being able to get any hits on the board. Last team fight, he tried to trigger the wild charge, but Luke was just able to black dragon form out of it, and it hasn't really had an impact so far. The issue Targeting. right now with Evo's Legends just having very uh, very long cooldown ultimate base crowd control engages is the fact that Geek Slate also has two purifies. So if they go for a pick up on Chidera, he can tie it away. If they try and go for a big AoE combo, a boy can very easily purify into a cult altar, but look at his stone. Oh, Luminum Glass does land, but it gets purified. Wow, such a good bait. Brand showing on the map. Psychos though, whoa. Flickering out to Ooh. safety there. That is going to be the isolation. Janna going to be caught all alone right now. The damage will come through. Now, it's oh. still him surviving, beating the entire team. Brand is trying to life steal up, but he will be slain. Now it's Taz with the Retribution battle. He wins it again for Evo Legends. Janna losing out. Dreams running away. Janna looking for the final kill. Final hit onto Dreams, oh no. but it will not come through just yet. Finally, he picks up the kill. It's a three for two. But again, Evo somehow, some way, when Brands doesn't perform, Taz picks it up and he picks the team over, putting it on his back to carry the team. What is that? What is that retribution? I mean, Insane. at some point, right? Look, Taz is even a level below Janna, but he still is able to find these retributions. How is this even possible? Geek Slate was just focusing on winning that fight, making sure that Chidera was going to be okay, making sure that overall, uh, everything is fine uh, for the team fight, but Evo's Legends are chained on oh. that objective, but Boiski now gets picked off. That's a lot of damage, and with the Lord marching down, this is a window for Evo's Legends to try and find something more. Oh man, how are they going to defend this here? The carry is the main option. Luke with a very good petrify, finds a kill! Chidera picks it up. Now Evo's Legends are backing off. The Lord has been defended, and it's not just by the carry, it's mainly by Luke who found that beautiful petrify. Psychon's finding the wall, but doesn't have the wild charge to follow it through. Geek Slate are going to be able to micromanage these waves, and just like that, it's a beautiful defense from the side of Geek Slate. 3,000 gold lead for Geek Slate up until this point. And it seems like Evo's Legends, even though they are behind, they still have the ability to, you know, stay relevant. I think the damage coming from Hijume is starting to hit onto the members of Geek Slate. Chidera knows this, and instantly you see an Athena shield. It seems with Evo's Legends, it's just very difficult for them to try and contest rounds, because they have a lot of tanks, technically, three members. But if you look at 
at Cyclops, it's still a lot of damage being built up. And yes, there's some there's the passive coming in from the Grok, where he's still gonna be a bit more tanky, but you can see that everyone needs to stay out of sight to try and get that combo, that catch. So Evo's legends are constantly getting pushed away by Geek Slate because uh, in contrast, Janna and Luke can do whatever they want in the front line, but look oh, at his flag! What? Dreams with a Noob Nam Blast, no follow-up. Janna is isolated, Brands with the Abyss Walker, jumping in front again, but that's gonna be the death of his welcome, catching Psychos again. It's gonna be Janna in the midst of it all, taken down, shut down. Luke in the back line, jumping with the Petrify, Brands with the Wind of Nature as well. Evo's Legend still winning in this team fight, one for zero, but Geek Slate are not backing away. They are able to bring Toss back to Spear of Destruction, and Ejo Man oh, deals oh. out so much, a boy! He's still able to pop the regeneration in time. He pops in the Shadow Stampede. Look at Boloiski with his movement on to the flanks right now. As the turret will be sieged down by Brands. Boloiski looking for a pick. He might just jump in on the Ejume. He fights the kill. That's one on the board for Igeek. But the boy's going to be stunned up by the wild charge. And now a boy. He still survived. Oh, no, Jadera now jumping back in with the distraction that a boy has bought for the team. Brands already able to lifesteal back up with a few hits on to the mini waves. Now the wall plays thin, but Geek Slate are putting some pressure back in. Evo Slate just need to recall. What a series. They have to be careful though, right? Because now Brands already has the Haas Claws. He is going to be a little bit more sustainable in this team fight. And Geek Slate instantly, reaction time. They're going to be able to open up the map and open up vision for the next neutral objective, which is the Lord. We'll see here. Jana, Qt, and Taz. Who is going to win that retribution battle again? There's a retri retribution battle to be concerned uh -oh. with, but also the bottom side. With the Spirit of Destruction, Brands is able to disrupt the lane equilibrium and make the wave push for Evo's Legends. So now Geek Slate are the ones pressured, but look at the damage. Shadera, half HP already, and Evo's Legends, they try and make a move as Luke goes for the Black Dragon form. It's a bait right now. Beloy able to jump onto Dreams. Now the Black Dragon form responded with as well. Luke stunned up, called Alter by a boy, saving his life. Janna versus Taz. It's two for two for Taz right now, but Janna pops in death as well. I'm gonna be stunned up right now as Janna is able to find it now. That's the redemption arc. But Brands wreaks havoc on the back what? line with a winning nature as well. He's able to live steal. That's a double kill for Brands. And in the back line, meanwhile, it's Janna and Beloy running for the hills. Taz and Psychos, super tanky. Beloy's waiting for the moment to jump out. Oh, no. So Brands finds the immortality. That's Brands taken down, but he plays with Brands. Won't find his mark just yet. Numina blast will as Janna will fall. The spear with just a bit, but Beloy is oh. visible. He to make flickers forward, finds him and takes him down. It's Chadera, a boy, and an enhanced lord versus the five members. Members of Evo's Legends. Why, oh my, that was a beautiful team fight by Evo's Legends. But even though they were able to get a little bit of an advantage, especially in terms of numbers, the problem was Jera wasn't taken down and the waves were pushing in favor of Geek Slate. We'll see. I mean, three members taken down. It seems like Evo's Legends, they want to go for an aggressive play here. They really do. They want to go for the end. 1.2k gold lead, that's the gold lead for Geek Slate. It's all down, but wow, Chadera and a boy still able to clear out the waves. This is really a top tier game, and Geek Slate are proving that they are a top team themselves. Evo's Legends, you're like trying to make something happen, waiting for a opportunity to trap members of Geek Slate, but no, they have to go back, get their own buffs, set up the waves again, and now both teams waiting for the next Lord, 95 seconds, and during that time, anything can happen. And despite everything going down, the higher damage dealt, there's still gonna be a boy on that Faramis, so Geek Slate might have to keep that in mind when they go for these big team fights. If they focus too much on shutting Brands down or shutting Hijume down, they might just for, they might just fall victim to a boy just doing a lot of damage on that Faramis with relative ease as well. So with the waves being pushed right here, I think Geek Slate is a team that does benefit more from the lack of vision for both sides. But later, once both teams are once again dancing around the Lord, and I do think that Evo's Legends are the ones with more tools to try and play it more reactively. And that is the main difference. I mean, I, okay, I agree with you in that sense, but have you seen the way Luke's been playing? He just goes straight into the back line, goes with the Petrify, and Brands is usually the one that gets taken down. And th that's a lot of playmaking potential that actually Geek Slate has. But we're going to take a look at the items here in the 19th, almost 20 minute of the game, where Geek Slate has a 1,000 goalie. But at this point, everyone should be quite good in terms of items. 
they're approaching a full item build, especially for the roamers right here. Usually the, the last to finish their inventory slot. So Baloyski, uh, in this context, will soon have a, a full inventory slot. And that means that Brands needs to be a bit more careful. He does have the win of nature, but in the midst of a chaotic team fight, who knows that, when Baloyski is going to make his appearance. And they still have to be careful to think of who is uh, who is Boloyski going to try and jump onto. Is it going to be Brands? Is it going to be Hijumi? And on the top of the high amount of damage, there's also the silence that can just throw off Evo's legends and their team fight potential. They make the move towards the Lord right here. One member all the way in the bottom side. That might just be the right time. It might be very convenient for Evo's legends. Evo's legends are trying to manipulate those side lanes, right? They're trying to push. They're trying to create pressure onto Geek Slate. Realizing that the Lord is already half health. Gonna cutie, as well as Taz, once again, that retribution battle is gonna start now. Oh, oh. It's gonna start here. That's a very aggressive move. Chadero stunned up. That's the mortality pop. Brent, now, but he's gonna be collapsed on. Oh. That's the gold altar oh by God. a boy. He saves his team, but at what cost? That's the ball born, taken very low. But Lloyd's still able to escape as the Numenon Blast gets charged in. Finds two members. Let's see the Lord. It's taken down. Brands for the Evolved Lord. Now, I don't know oh. what way Hijume finds a pickoff back. And just like that, it might actually be worth to Evo's Legends now. It might be worth, but do they have enough damage to go in for the Siege here? Ooh, Evo's Legends can use the waves very efficiently and they can buy some time to wait for Brands to come up. He is up, he's out of the map for 25 seconds right here, but Evo's Legends can very easily wait for the right opportunity. Ooh. And once he's up, Boloyski will be the one that isn't on the map. So now with the gold advantages equalized, Evo's Legends will be available, will be able to play, make the play happen unless Geek Slate wants to bring the fight to Evo's Legends instead and go for a fight knowing that they have a gold lane advantage, especially right now at 22 minutes of the game with everyone having a full inventory slot. Oh, Cyclops, he's trying to buy some time here. Mm -hmm. Twice already, this is the second wall that he's put up. He's trying to buy some time for Brands to hit, but oh my god. It's also a good bait here. Chadera gonna be caught in the Noonan Blast. That's the Flicker not ready just yet. Chadera still able to free hit in the back line as he's able to dash away. That's the Petrified by Luke, and that's oh. the freaking back from John QT. He brings the entire team back. He's man dream, but Brands has rotated over back to the team fight right now. Chadera picks up an Unstoppable, and Evo's Legends will have to back away. Geek Slate with another beautiful defense. I feel like Evo's Legends they were too precious to try and find a fight where, where you can see that Brands was nowhere close to the beginning of that fight. So I think they were just trying to make it work way too hard and Geek Slate, they can punish them because in this late stage, it's not that Geek Slate has no items. They're also sitting on a full inventory slot. They have a late game gold lane as well in Tadera. And you can see that in that fight, a boy was just splashing damage left and right. So Evo's Legends need to respect the potential for Geek Slate to just win it out with brute force in this late game stage. This is an end angle here for Geek Slate. The mini waves are there. Taz gonna be able to actually oh, jumps back in with the dash and the taunt right now. The cold ulcer will be placed down. A boy is looking for the end right now. That's gonna be Taz with the appraiser trap, dealing a whole lot of damage. Immortality right there by Taz, and he's gonna be brought back to the team once again. A boy finds the kill, but guess what? The minion waves have been cleared out. Evo Legends have found enough time for the rest of the team to respawn all only for Taz's death. I think with that, they they go, they got a pretty good trade, right? It's a good defense once again, not just by Geek Slate, but with Evo's Legends doing the same thing. Evo's Legends were able to defend and stop the end push from Geek Slate, but at what cost? Now the jungle won't be up once the Lord is there in the picture, and Geek Slate has a window here where he can still go for those pickoffs instead of going for the Lord Dance that in a way benefits Evo's Legends. So all the cards are in the hands of Geek Slate right now, and Evo's Legends are the one that have to try and predict a bit more how Geek Slate wants to play it out. So the fact that they're able to pressure and use the potential of ending the game to just cycle the death timers even longer, I think is very valuable. There'll be about a 10 second window where Geek Slate can pressure Evo's room. Seems like they're going for it here, Michael. I mean, right now, Geek Slate, they're already rotating here. Evo's Legends. I think they're going to contest, though. Brand's already there. They have to be careful, though. Look at that positioning coming in from Brock. We have destruction. We now blast as well. Cancelled out by Luke. Brilliant cancels. The boy is able to rotate inside. Gump jumps in with a wild charge. But it's Chadera who finds the Lord. Evo's Legends on full retreat as Psychots gets taken out in the front. Geek Slate. They're able to secure the Lord, and this might be it. It's an evolved Lord in the 24th minute of the game. And the death timers are at an all-time peak right now. 60 seconds left. 
They have the man advantage, they have the Lord as well, and they have all the kits in their arsenal to be able to win this. And we'll see what exactly happens. They have to be careful of the counter though. There's still a lot of crowd control in the hands of Evos and there is a lot of AoE on Valentina and Moscow, but here we go. Brand still in the back line to the Abyss Walker as well. No, but a flash from the back, finding four! No, it's just three as Malloy is able to open up some space for Tadera. As now he's free hitting onto the base. The Lord is taken very low. Brands is down. Geek Slate have done it. They've come back from a crazy game. And it's here equal once again. One to one in the series. Wow, forcing a third game in this best of three. Geek Fam, against all odds, against all the caster predictions, was able to get that win against EVO's Legends. Very impressive. Ranger Ramos maintain his vote for Geek it's your Fam. Caster curse. And he comes up, and it's my caster curse indeed. You are <laughs> absolutely correct. But wow, that was a great performance from both these teams. And just come.